Hey guys, welcome back to Forward Farming. Today you're getting a solo episode from me, um, so buckle up. I've had this idea um, for this episode in my head for a little while now, um, but did I do any notes or anything? No, of course not. I'm just going to be pulling this all out of my behind, so if it doesn't make sense or it's kind of all um jumbled up well i'm just going to i'm just going to ramble for a little bit and hope you guys can can keep up and follow along so uh before we dive into that today um i hope you all had a great thanksgiving it is now officially the christmas season which i feel like we say this every year but holy cow where is the time gone i feel like it was just halloween yesterday and now now i'm wearing a a sweatshirt with a bernie's mountain dog wearing a christmas hat so what the heck happened um our thanksgiving was kind of uneventful uh we just got together with my family um i had been working on doing this cranberry recipe showdown thing all of last week and uh, i've been in the kitchen all day like pretty much every day and uh come thursday thanksgiving i woke up and i made some cranberry fluff and then i made a cranberry bread and then right as we were walking out the door my (laughs) my stomach started to cramp up and I'm like, "Mm, this isn't good. And not in a fun way, not in like a, oh, this is just, it it was in a very unpleasant way. Uh, I'm pretty sure I had like a little stomach bug or something. So I called my mom and I'm like, hey, um, I probably shouldn't be over with other people just in case this is contagious. So uh, thanks and uh, enjoy Dan and Porter. So Dan and Porter went over and hung out with my parents and my brother and they brought me home a plate and I was in bed for the rest of the day with stomach pains. <laughs> it's all fine. And no, I'm not pregnant. Let's just not. I had I called my mom and I'm like, just getting on top of this. I'm not pregnant. Uh, but I am having a stomach thing. So uh that was that. It was not enjoyable, but we recovered well. And now uh it's Monday evening and uh Porter is coming down with a cold. So that'll be That'll be fun. That'll be fine. Uh, so that means I'm going to be sick in the next day or two. So let's get this podcast going before I lose my voice. So, <laughs> uh, so tonight I wanted to kind of piggyback off of last week's episode. If you didn't listen to that with Peggy, just just pause what you're doing and and go listen to that. I don't want to say take away from this episode, like pause listening because then you might not come back, but. If you haven't listened to last week's episode, please go do that. Uh, it was a very, it was a very deep episode for both Becca and I. We weren't really expecting to have like a little mini therapy session, but that's kind of what it turned into. Um, we had a bunch of different topics we wanted to talk about with Peggy, and we just didn't get there because we were having such a in depth conversation um, about about mental health and our well being and and changing careers and. If you're watching the video, I'm <laughs> my cat is in here because she just can't not be in here and there's uh, a closet door that she's pulling open. So if you saw that on the video, that's just Winnie. I don't have a ghost in here yet. Um but oh by the way, we are on YouTube. If you would rather watch this, I guess, go check us out on YouTube, Forward Farming Podcast. Um But anyway, this episode is going to kind of piggyback off of um, what I talked about with Peggy and in the sense of like postpartum journey. I I feel like I've kind of talked about this a little bit, but I feel like I'm kind of at that point now. Um, Porter is is over two and I feel like I'm past like that postpartum haze, that postpartum just weird stage of life, which thankfully I felt like it took forever to get to like a quote unquote normal state and I did a lot of work to get to this point. So I wanted to kind of talk about that a little bit. Um what what all went on and how I got to be where I am today. So if you missed any part of my journey, uh it all like I think the first time I talked about like the birth and everything, uh that episode is back in 2021, like September maybe. It's called uh Don't Have Sex Because You'll Get Pregnant and Die. <laughs> If if you're sensitive to those kind of stories, um, like it, it was a traumatic birth if you didn't listen to it. So if you're sensitive to that, by no means listen to it. But um, that kind of summarizes everything uh, that got me to 
to just like kind of a rough postpartum recovery stage. So, so let's, let's talk about it. (laughs) So, um, I feel like this is directed more towards women who are in a rural community and who didn't necessarily feel like a ton of like physical support during your postpartum journey, or maybe like the, the person who is, who the mom who is pregnant with their first child congratulations and doesn't know what to expect postpartum and looking for like tips and tricks to like plan ahead if you experience like postpartum depression anxiety that kind of thing or this might be for um the mom who um might not have a ton of support or this is if or if you're a mom and um you're the first in your friend group to be pregnant and entering like a brand new stage of life that your other friends aren't used to or if you're the friend who um it hasn't had a baby yet and your friend is going through pregnancy for the first time and you kind of want to know how to prepare to support them which would be incredible <laughs> if you're that person so um this can this can be uh I hope this can be helpful for a lot of different people. So uh, let's let's start at the beginning. So uh, Porter was born end of August, right? And um, we started harvest um, like October. Let's let's just call it as it is. There's like six week period where I was bedridden basically, um, and then I had to work harvest because you know farmer that's that's just what you have to do you have to get up and and work so i i had a lot of things change very drastically and i sometimes go back and i look at videos that i was making during that time during that harvest of 2021 and i'm looking at myself now and like i just want to give like that me such a big hug because i can see how tired i am i can see like how much i'm struggling i can see like all of that sadness in my eyes i can see it now whereas when i was doing it it was just like pure survival mode and like i remember those first weeks those first months just being so exhausted because we had our nights and days flipped around so i was awake all night long and then working all day long while trying to breastfeed and like it just like there's just so much going on and like immediately have this anxiety of like is he sleeping at night if he's sleeping like is he still breathing there's all these like new fears that I didn't that I'm like learning about and it was just not not fun so I feel like that kind of started things off on like a downward spiral that I didn't really know how to control and I didn't really know what I was looking for um I didn't know that I needed help. I didn't know, like, I didn't know a lot of this stuff. Um, so for probably the first couple months, like I, I was losing weight at like an alarming rate. Um, and I thought, you know, this is great. You know, this is what I wish I could have done (laughs) before getting pregnant. I wish I could have lost this weight beforehand, but now it's just happening. I'm not going to question it. Now looking back, I realized I probably wasn't eating enough not probably. I know I wasn't eating enough and I wasn't eating the right things to like nourish my body and then keep up with like breastfeeding and all this stuff. And like, it was, it was just, it was weird. Like, again, all this stuff that I didn't know, I wish I knew um, because I would have taken better care of myself. So I could have taken better care of my baby. And uh, like, I was just so malnourished. I wasn't sleeping. Um, I was just waking up even when he was sleeping. It was just always this paranoia state. And like, I didn't, I felt like at the time I was doing okay, but I really wish someone would have stepped in, um, and been like, Hey, let me take him so you can go take a nap. Like, I wish I had someone outside of like my mom or outside of, uh, Dan to be that support person to like step in and be like, a safe space for me to feel comfortable leaving my baby with, but I didn't really feel that too much. Um, so be prepared for that. Um, let's see what else. So during that, yeah, during the time I was just like uncomfortable, um, just not sleeping and just, just being on edge all the time. And I just wasn't, I just wasn't keeping up the way I thought I was at the time. So that kind of led to like this slow, slow (laughs) depression and uh, going into the winter months, especially it was really hard because 
um, being where we are so far away from everything, it was really hard to, and, and especially coming out of COVID, um, this was 2021, so we were still like pretty, pretty locked down with things. So it was hard to feel comfortable going out in public or like wanting to go to, into a grocery store or wanting to go outside basically. So I felt very confined in my home. Like, like you can't leave because RSV is a thing. COVID is a thing. Like all of these germs are going to kill your baby basically is like what I was thinking and then you know having all the snow in the winter time like don't you dare get in your car with your baby because you're going to get into an accident like all of these anxiety just like intrusive thoughts are just taking over and that's something that I'm still really working on right now is like it's okay to go out in public with your baby like it's okay if they get sick it's okay you know like these things are normal. Like you need to get out of the house. You need to go places with him to get him exposed to, to life basically. And that was a really hard challenge for me. And it still is. Um, he doesn't do daycare. He's at home with me all, all day, basically. And like outside of like harvest or when I'm needed on the marsh, it's just me and Porter at home all day long. Um, and it's still a struggle for me to like go places with him by myself because he's just such a big kid and he's so busy all the time. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, can I handle him by myself out in, in public? Like if we go to the children's museum, can I keep an eye on him? Like, can I, you know, maneuver him through this space safely? And that's like my biggest thing is just getting more comfortable um, getting out of the house because that's something he and I both need. So that was um, a hard adjustment for me to overcome because winter seemed to come a lot faster than it usually does. Um, and and things just spiral in, in the winter months. Like it's really hard um, for me anyway. It was really hard to find comfortability with what I was doing. Um, and I, I remember, gosh, it must've been like, January or February, I had my first night away from him. Um, and, and it was, we had a great trip planned with, with Becca and some of our friends. We got a house down in like Sauk Prairie area and we, we stayed there for a couple nights and it was so much fun. But the entire time, like checking my phone, like, oh my God, how is he doing? He stayed with Dan. So I knew he was fine, but it was just like, oh my God, I'm not there. What What's going on? And, and and I think it was really important for me, especially at that time, to like just get out and, and step away and be like, you know, it's okay to let someone other than you take care of your kid. Like, it's okay. Everything's going to be fine. Um, so it's just taking like those little baby steps of like stepping outside of your comfort zone to find a new comfort. Um, so that was, that's kind of like the early stages of it. And I noticed during those times, like I was forgetting everything. I had this huge brain fog. I, I just never felt right. And I didn't know what was going on. I knew it was all part of postpartum. Like my hormones were crazy. Like I was crying. I was laughing. I like all of these big feelings. I, I felt like I was a toddler because I didn't know how to express myself. I didn't know how to you know, say what I was thinking without sounding like a lunatic. Like how, how could you explain to someone like, I, if I fall asleep, my kid is going to die. Like that, those were some of the intrusive thoughts that I was thinking. And like, how do you say that to a normal person who's never experienced that before without them being like, listen, <laughs> you, you need help. And I wish I would have said that. So someone would have said that to me because it would have made things a lot easier. So I wouldn't have to fight all of these demons inside my head by myself. And and like now I know, but then I didn't. I thought this was just like normal and this would pass and I didn't know how long it would take to pass. Um and I felt like it took a really long time. So uh yeah and then and then so this was like February and then probably like in March or April I noticed I started gaining weight pretty rapidly, which I thought was really weird. Um, so I mentioned this last week, like during those first few months, I had lost a ton of weight. I was at a size that I hadn't been in a long time. And then all of a sudden I gained everything back and then some, um, from before being pregnant. 
which was really uncomfortable because I went up like two or three pant sizes um, in like three or four months. And I knew that wasn't normal. So I go to my doctor and I say, hey, do you know what's going on? Like when I when I was pregnant, I had gestational diabetes. Is that something that's still lingering? Um, so I went on like this, this like holistic journey, I think, because my doctor, my like primary doctor wasn't being helpful. Um, so I went more of like the holistic route. So um, they said, yeah, it's probably something like, it's all about your gut health. That's kind of like the, the big thing. And it's like, okay, now try cutting out all of these trigger foods that are, are normal for people who are experiencing the same symptoms. So cut out gluten, dairy, um, soy, and uh, like red meat, I think I cut out. It was a lot. It was very extreme. And I cut that out all at once. And it was really hard and it didn't feel sustainable to me at the time. But I was like, you know, if I can, if I can do this for just a couple months, see if I feel any better than I know, like this is, this is something that I can work with. And then I started to like reintroduce these food groups, seeing if I had any reactions and I didn't, which was frustrating because I was like, well, I just, I just put myself through this torture for like eight weeks um, right after the holidays. It was actually this time last year. I think I was doing it. It was right after Thanksgiving. It was right uh my birthday. Um actually my birthday is this coming Sunday. So it was right after my birthday that I started to do this insane cleanse, I guess if you want to call it that. I think it was just kind of a money grab situation, but I don't wanna I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> uh so I eliminated all these foods. I I added these supplements um and like I was sleeping better for the first time. So it did really help like my mental clarity. Uh, which was great. I was I was feeling like I was getting energy back. I felt like I was sleeping really well. I felt like um, most importantly, my bowel movements were regular. I've never had like regular. <laughs> we're just gonna talk about poop, okay? I've never had like regular poops every day consistently, and I will say that was the one thing that I really noticed was that my skin, like on my back, especially cleared up. Um, and apparently, that's like toxins releasing is when you're when your back is breaking out or like your chest or something that's just built up toxins because you're not pooping enough that's what that's what she told me so my skin cleared up there I was I was feeling good like I was feeling more functional but I wasn't like I didn't notice anything too crazy um so I was like okay well I don't think I have any food allergies like this um any of like the big triggers anyway so I was like hmm let me try like a more sustainable approach. And I worked with um, my trainer that I've been working with for years. Um, I was like, how, what do you think? Um, so he, he broke it down for me and like how much protein I need to be eating a day. And I said, I felt really good when I was pregnant and I was eating like I was basically diabetic. So that's kind of the approach I'm taking now. Um, it's just eating protein obviously for every meal I'll be eating a lot of protein for every meal watching the carbs that I do intake and what kind of carbs I'm eating so um if I'm eating like say fruit like if I'm eating grapes for a snack grapes are always like my my go to if I'm eating that limiting that but then pairing like a protein or a fat with them so I'm eating like nuts or I'm eating cheese or something to like go with the the carbs to kind of balance out the sugar um, and I feel like that has helped a lot. And like, I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling good with like my nutrition. So I'm just being mindful and I'm not eating like an asshole. I'm not eating like ice cream or I'm not eating like a lot of sugary desserts. I'm not eating like a bag of chips every, every week, you know, like I'm just eating like a decent person should eat. Like I try to more, more whole foods, less processed stuff is like my main goal. Um, and I've noticed like my body is has been adapting well to that. Um, another thing that I I always enjoyed uh, lifting weights. I've never been a cardio person. I just um, so when I went to the doctor and I was telling them all my things, and she's like, "Well, what do you do for exercise?" I said, "I lift weights," um, and and I do like hit workouts and stuff. And she told me like looked me like dead in the eyes and told me to stop doing that. Uh, and to try running instead, and it was at that point where like mm, I'm I'm not listening to you anymore. Also, it, so if if you see me in real life and you see my body type, it's very strange. 
<laughs> not gonna lie it's very strange i i have a very strange build and i have a hard time finding people that look like me so i have a very large i'm short i'm five four if you didn't know a lot of people assume i'm like five eight from based off of what they've seen on the internet which if you think that thank you but i'm five four um of a, of a very short torso with a large chest and i carry my weight in my lower belly and i have carried my weight in my lower belly since before i was pregnant it's always been a big concern of mine but it is what it is uh and now it's 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 a lot more in my lower belly and it's just it's very uncomfortable to to like try to find clothes that fit so where was i going with this anyway that's just my body type <laughs> so you can again we're going off the rails so uh during like my exercise journey i again was talking to my trainer and i'm like this is what i'm doing she told me that i need to incorporate more cardio he laughed um and said that i'm doing enough with like my hit workouts that like no you don't need to start running but i did switch to a lower impact cardio and i invested in a peloton bike i got it off of facebook marketplace so i didn't pay full price for it because they're not cheap um and i enjoy that you know it's not bad um it was it was rough starting but now it's i i enjoy it so um i i do that for cardio and i get up early in the mornings and i just ride for 20 30 minutes i do classes but sometimes i listen to like my audiobook and you can just do like a free ride and ride for however long you want for as far as you want I do that sometimes too, and it's kind of relaxing just to listen to an audiobook, or you can now like watch your shows like with through YouTube or Disney or HBO or whatever through your Peloton. Um, slick. It's very slick. Um, and they also have a ton of different classes that you can take through their app. And I really enjoyed getting into Pilates um, to to rebuild my core strength because I feel like I. I don't feel like I know I've been using my core completely wrong this entire time. And it, I've been really focusing on like my pelvic floor, which is something I didn't do before. And I wish I would have. And I feel like that's where like my lower belly comes into play too, is like my, my true core muscles have never been activated. And like, I just don't know how to use them properly. So going slow through like a Peloton course and having different instructors explain things differently has really helped things click in my brain. So when I am lifting heavier weights, I know what muscles to engage when I'm doing heavier lifts. So I'm not hurting my low back like I was before because I didn't engage my core enough or like when I'm especially picking up Porter because he's so big, um, I can engage those muscles properly. So I'm not throwing my back out like every other week, like I was before. So that's been super helpful. Um, but probably the most helpful thing that I've done to help. Um, so I've talked about like how I've been eating, my physical journey. And I think the most important thing that I wish I would have figured out a lot sooner is meditation. Um, through the Peloton app, I I started... Oh gosh, when was this? Probably like February, maybe February or March um, of this year. I did my first like guided meditation and it was just like a body scan. It was just like this internal body scan and it was 10 minutes long. Um, and it was, I, I like turn the notifications off of my phone. I like whenever I work out, I just turn my notifications off. I put it in like personal mode or whatever. So you don't get notified if you get like a call or something. Um, and I set, I set that on. I turn this 10 minute self guided or like this guided meditation on. And within two minutes of doing this, like I just really immerse myself into the experience. And I started just like sobbing. Um, because it's like, check in on yourself, ask like how you really are. And I never had done that before. And I just started immediately just weeping and I, I didn't question it. Like I knew where this was coming from immediately as soon as it started happening. And it was just all of, and like, I knew at the time it was just all of this trauma and just shit. <laughs> 
coming to the surface that I hadn't dealt with. It was just all these emotions that I haven't dealt with because I felt like I didn't have time. I felt like I didn't make that time for myself to feel all of these things that I had been suppressing for a year and a half, two years. And that all came to the surface. And like I just sat there for those 10 minutes and I just cried and I cried and I cried. And I just kept asking myself, how are you? How are you? Um, and after those 10 minutes, like it, it ended and I just kind of sat there and I was like, holy shit, <laughs> you know, I, I felt like this huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I felt happiness that I hadn't felt in a long time. I felt this calmness that I hadn't felt in a long time. And it was just like someone had erased everything. Not really, but it just felt like everyone, it, like it just had just poof, gone away. Like it just all gone. And it was just like the strangest, most peaceful feeling I have felt in a very long time. Like it was just this, like 10 minutes prior, it was just like this overwhelming, just like dread, anxiety, just these heavy, heavy feelings. And then all of a sudden it was just like happy. It was just sunshine and rainbows. And it was addicting. Like I wanted to feel that again. I I walked out of my space and I walked inside and I was just like, holy shit, you know? Like I I see things completely different. Um a wild, wild experience and and I looked it up and yeah, it's a it's called a trauma release. Um different parts of your body store different emotions. Um and and trauma is something that your body holds on to, even if it's something that you forgot all about. If it's something that you've suppressed for so long, your body is holding on to that ne negative energy in a lot of crummy ways. Um, and and fun fact, your belly is where <laughs> your stress is stored. Um, so there's there's this thing called cortisol, uh, and it's basically how your body handles stress. And when you're, you have like high levels of cortisol, um, that's when like the weight gain happens. That's when the extra stress happens. That's when your sleeping habits change poorly. Um, just like all these negative things that I had been experiencing, it all kind of came back to cortisol. And I found out, you know, I did like a blood test, um, to check to see my different levels, like my hormone levels, my insulin levels. And that's something that really helped me. It was through this company called Thrive, I think. Thorn? Thorn. Thorn with an E. <laughs> uh, you can do like a blood test and then there's like a saliva test that you do that gathers um, like your horn, like those, those things throughout the day. And then it gives you those results. So I could see like after a meal, my insulin was higher. Um, and, and if it lowered at all, or if it stayed high, my cortisol was higher at night, which um, helped me understand that I was, I was still stressed before I went to bed, which means I wasn't sleeping well at night. So at that time I was working out in the evening. So I switched my more, I switched um, to working out in the morning so I could have like that higher stress in the morning. So I had time to recover by the evening. Um, I started adding more electrolytes to my water to make sure I was staying hydrated enough, you know, just like all these different steps to take to ensure that by the end of the day, I could kind of just like shut my brain off and just focus on sleep. <laughs> That's like my main um, priority now is getting, getting Porter down for bed and then going to sleep. <laughs> And making sure I'm getting quality sleep. So I'm drinking a ton more water than I used to. I take um, magnesium to help me sleep and also to help me poop. Because <laughs> that's still an issue sometimes. Um, magnesium works both ways. It helps you sleep and it helps you poop. I'm not a doctor, so please don't take, my, don't take this for a grain of salt. This is what works for me. Um, so yeah, those are meditation was just this huge 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 thing for me that I wish I would have gotten on sooner just finding a way to calm your mind and to check in with yourself when you feel like like you're the only one that can really understand how you're feeling and it's it's hard to know how you're feeling when you're just constantly like pushing things down and worrying about everything else other than yourself like, oh, baby needs this, kids need this, husband needs this, like family needs this. And like, you, I, I know what it's like to just drop yourself down on the ladder, but trust me, put yourself up top of the ladder. 
like you need to you need to check in on yourself you need to to make sure you are doing okay before you can take care of others again it's like the put your own air mask on before helping others on an airplane type of situation like when you take care of yourself that's when you can turn to help others even if you don't have time when you wake up in the morning check in with yourself do a couple deep breathing exercises if that's your time if you have two minutes do it if you have two minutes before you fall asleep do it you know just that's all it takes a minute two minutes whatever just do some breathing exercises just to calm your heart rate down if you if you're dealing with like high stress all the time if you're anxious like me just take a breath also what really helped me is cutting out true crime (laughs) i stopped listening to true crime podcasts i don't have dateline on in the background all the time one because i don't want my kids seeing that anymore and two like it it just made me so aware of like the music i like the music the background music on those shows is meant to get your heart rate up why why do i need to do that it's already escalated enough i don't consume a ton of caffeine because again i'm already anxious enough why am i adding fuel to the fire if i am drinking caffeine it's like earlier in the morning to get me going um and it's just it's just making small little changes like that to just i guess my main thing is i'm I'm really focusing on being self-aware um thinking thinking internally I guess instead of just being like always on the go, it's like, nope, focus that more internal. Like if you're having this problem, what can I do to fix it? Just just focusing more internally and and um and taking care of myself that way. So I hope that all makes sense. Does that make sense? I feel like I just threw a I feel like this was just kind of like a trauma dump and I didn't mean it to be. So if you took it that way, I'm sorry. Um, but I'm hoping this could be just like a way for everybody to to just feel like you're not alone in this kind of situation to know that postpartum anxiety and depression is a real thing and it it it's really hard when you're in it and if you're not one to like if you're having a hard time asking other people for help here's kind of the steps that I took to help myself um but there's no shame in asking for help it at all i i asked for help but just not from my doctor <laughs> I I did, but I feel like I needed to find another way because I didn't feel comfortable with the ways that they suggest. So if that's you, if you go to the doctor and you say, hey, help me, um, know what you want. If if you're not feeling comfortable with what they're suggesting, know that there are other options out there and available for you. So don't give up advocating for yourself. Um, And if you are the first one in your friend group to go through this if you're the first in your friend group to go through motherhood um it's tough (laughs) it's tough because you kind of give up your friends along the way sometimes which is hard because sometimes the friends don't know what to do for you um and if you are a friend supporting a friend who's going through motherhood for the first time reach out all hours of the day they might not text you back right away they might take a week to get back to you but just know that they are still thinking of you um so please keep thinking of them ask to see pictures because mom is always going to want to share pictures with their friends they just don't want to feel like they're overwhelming you with these pictures so please be excited when they they send you pictures please always ask for pictures check in with her check in with with the dad check in with everybody and just offer to help um and if they turn it down like insist on helping them in some way shape or form um and maybe we can talk about this on a different episode but just know if you're going through motherhood if you're in the early stages it's 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 hard but it's the most rewarding thing like i i would love to go back and just snuggle my new little baby again um i'm not going to cry i'm not going to cry so anyway, let, 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 let's just wrap it up there. If you're going through it, I feel you. If you need to talk about anything, just know my messages are always open. Any time of night, I probably will wake up at some point in the night 
<laughs> so never feel like you're being a burden by reaching out to somebody and asking for help, especially especially me. Um, I know Becca, I'm gonna I'm gonna put words in your mouth. Feel free to message Becca as well. She's been through it a couple of times too. Um, just just know that we're always in your corner and we're always rooting for you, always rooting for the best. Um and uh I hope this was helpful. I hope this was um I just I I just hope people can take something from this. And I hope you're all I hope you're all hanging in there. The holidays are a really tough time. Um no matter what you're going through, whether you're going through something exciting or if you've gone through loss, like it's it's a challenging time uh for a lot of us, especially in this economy. Holy cow. Like it's it's tough. I feel like a lot of people are feeling the pinch this year. Um and if that's you, no, you're not alone. Uh it's it's a tough time. So, um, I'm thinking of all you guys. I hope you're all doing well. Um, let's just, let's just send everybody a big hug because I, I, I'm not a hugging person, but I'm going to, I'm going to send them anyway. So take that with a grain of salt, sending you all good vibes. Namaste. (laughs) If you're not following us already, (laughs) this was a disaster. I'm sorry, you guys. I, I hope this was helpful. Um, if you're not following us already, you can you can watch this on YouTube if you want to see if you want to see me squirm a little bit. Uh, I just have a really tar- hard time opening up, so I <laughs> so I hope this like I I I put things in a way that people understand. And if it's confusing, I'm sorry. Please let me know if it was confusing. <laughs> uh, anyway, you can find us on YouTube. Uh, just search Forward Farming Podcast. We try to get episodes up when we can. Uh, it's getting a little bit easier, so I think I've got it figured out now. But uh, check us out on YouTube. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram over at Forward Farming Podcast. If you guys have a topic that you want us to talk about or if you have a guest that you want to hear from, please let us know or send us an email over at forwardfarmingpod at gmail.com. We can chit chat through email if you'd like. Uh, you can follow me over at Cranberry Chats, and Becca is over at Becca Hilby. Thank you guys so much for listening. Happy holidays, and we'll see you next week.